Welcome to the Smite Console League, and this time things will look a little bit different. It's the PS4 qualifiers. Finch here, I am joined by Taco. For a long time, it's been just the box, so we're kind of opening things up here now. We're opening things up all the way. PlayStation players have been asking for the longest yes. time ever. Like, when is PS4 Pro League going to finally hit? And, well, this is finally the chance for a lot of these teams, which is why we have so many of them trying out. Yeah, that's right. Just to kind of talk a little bit about what you all can expect, we've got two groups in each region. So there's an a, Group A and Group B in both North America and Europe. They're going to be battling it out here throughout this tournament to try and see who qualifies to the actual league format. It'll be a perfect mirror of what you've already come to expect on Xbox, just going to be on PS4 this time. So that means you're going to have tons of console action for you to look at. And the Pro League is only about to kick off. I mean, this is going to be a great chance for us also to yeah. get a little bit of insight towards how some of these console guys over in PlayStation side of things tend to do it because you never really know what kind of similarities there might be. A lot of the time, these sort of teams tend to adapt their own style of play. And so it's just figuring out who's going to be the aggressors, who's going to be the passive players, and whether or not everybody, who's going to end up on top, more importantly. Oh, yeah. We all want to know who's vying for those top spots here in Talk or exactly who's the one that's going to be able to grab them and there's no spot that's higher than making it to hrx at dreamhack that's going to be happening november 16th through 18th make sure you grab those tickets right now at highrezexpo.com uh the cool thing about every web browser i know you all need me to tell you this so that you can just hit that new tab <laughs> button you only have to close out of the stream you can keep hearing my wonderful voice open up the new tab type in highrezexpo.com purchase some tickets come see me come get talking to dab for you all that's going to be happening and fortunately for you guys all you got to do is buy those tickets, That's unlike right. the players who've got to compete to try and make it there. But if you want a chance, you should go ahead and cheer on some of your favorite contenders because it's really important. They're going to need your energy if they want to find their way at HRX. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be one of the tougher paths, really, to try and make it to HRX this year. So everybody's going to have to make sure that they're on their A game. But before we go towards HRX, let's remember we're right here at the PS4 qualifiers. Let's take a look at the teams that we can expect here in each group. Now, again, these are the North American standings. There's two groups that we're going to be looking at, Group A and Group Group B, EU is going to be mirrored in that way. It'll have a Group A and Group B. Two teams are going to come out from each group as well. So the top two teams from each group are the ones that we're going to be looking at. So remember, we're looking at Europe here first today. We're going to be in Group A. We're going to have our two teams by the end of this. And uh, actually, to start things off, it's going to be me and you, Finch, with Souls versus Charizard in my backyard. And right. Well, I mean, if, if the names are any sort of telling as to what we can expect, you know, maybe it's it's going to be hot and spicy here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if they've got Charizard on their side, it's hard to get much better than that. Nice little right? barbecue. Maybe yeah, that is this an uh, implication towards a barbecue, you think? Perhaps, yeah. Open should, invitation. Let's let's go hang out with them, see if maybe they grill up some dogs, some burgers, and, you know, just be in on that. You know, just be, just be part of that. I'm always uh, a heavy participant whenever, whenever Charizard can be involved, but... It, it will be a pretty interesting matchup, I think, between Souls and Charizard in my backyard. I, I think that, you know, team names aside, sure. uh, these <laughs> players certainly probably have a, a lot of really cool new things that we quite possibly may have never seen before. Yeah, and I'm very excited to see. I, I imagine this will, this meta is going to mirror the, the, the Xbox side very much, like what we've already accustomed to seeing from them, where some picks that aren't as popular in the Pro League kind of thrive here on the console side. So I imagine we'll be seeing some of those same things, you know, like the, the Odins and the Zeuses really are a little bit more strong here than maybe they always are in the SP. I think AOE will always be a heavy priority whenever yes. it comes to the world of console, and PlayStation in particular, I don't think that that'll be much different. No. As you can see, they've already elected to take away some of the more popular choices that we've been seeing as of late. Athena, Chernobog, Shibalanke, and Giannis, so a heavy takeaway from those global side of things. I like this. These are some really strong bands that have come out right away, and mostly on the meta side of things. The question that remains, though, is sustain. There's been no real eye turned towards that in the bands, so that means the likes of Chang'az could certainly still be coming through, the Guan use the Raz, so it's already the Artemis that's been picked up, but it could be a chance here for Souls to get some real nice too early picks. What'll be interesting though, also Finch, is that we know the the specialty players of the Xbox world already. We, right. You you know you see Odin, you automatically assume wolves in the back of your mind, but here on PlayStation, we haven't had a chance to really establish those members up until <laughs> right now. So uh, this could be a really uh, easy chance for some of these players to really distinguish themselves early on in, in competing. That's right. Legends are about to be forged right here, right now, Taco, for the first time. So very excited to be able to see some of these. All these teams, though, are capable. They played through those open brackets. They made it here to this stage where they have a chance to qualify now into the actual league. And with that qualification chance on the line already, 
We can see. We can see I am beat. Charizard in my backyard. The Unbots and the Geb selected a strong team. Fire team, the Cataclysm and the Fear No Evil. And then Artemis to follow up. I mean, so far, looking pretty good. These are both some pretty strong team compositions formed up for both sides. I mean, Souls, you've got a lot of extended range. I'm assuming yeah. that they're going to be looking more towards focusing out one individual member. This is kind of leaning a bit more into the pick composition side because you have that Earth and Fury to pair alongside of the Divine or the Final Judgment out of the Thoth. Plenty of, of range, like I said, and love this frontline and souls have going for them. Yes. Would really like to see them solidify one more heavy damage carry in, in the hunter role, maybe like a ROM, for example. I know it would shift things to be pretty heavy handed on the late game side of things, but right. I think it could complement the rest of soul composition quite well. And Robin can do enough, I feel like, early, where even if a lot of their damage dealers are late, that if he can get off to a good start, he can certainly kind of close that gap for them a bit. But you're right. I mean, right now on this soul squad, who do you target? Get. They're incredibly safe already. And then you add Hachimaru with the Mounted Archery. Can you get much safer than that, really? And the range from Thoth. So it's going to be tough uh, for, for Charizard to try and get catch anyone from Souls out, really. Uh, this should be an interesting matchup also between the Hachiman and the Artemis. Never really can tell who's going to get the one up in lane because right. Hachiman, he's got that Mounted Archery to keep up with the Artemis. But she also has a heavy turn and burn factor herself between the Suppress the Insulin, board damage, a lot of different ways to approach this lane. Charizard, though, they're going to be relying a little bit more on making sure that the the Unbots and the Poseidon synergy is there between them. The Poseidon can be really strong and is able to land those Krakens, but he's going to need the setup to be there for him. As it looks like it's going to be Unbots in the jungle, and then actually Kamazots over in the solo lane. We don't see a ton of this anymore, Taco, but that's going to be the plan here from Frosted Sunshine. And Frosted Sunshine on this Kamazots pick, Finch, I, I think that I like this pick because it's exclusively for diving the Thoth, it feels like. It's going to be very hard for Bikondu to stay alive whenever you've got this Kamazots bat out of hell, freely diving you in your tower at times, probably even being able to escape due to the fact you've got those three swoops, you're up there in the air for a relatively long period of time, and it's just the perfect killing blow that you would want against a Thoth. It could certainly be strong. In terms of if he can get to the back line, it's very hard to peel the Kamazots off, but he's not going to provide much else from that. You know, like when, when Ivan rotates over here on this Kakulan, he is going to have that big knock up, the roots, the pushes that he can provide, especially once he's transformed in that rage form. It's already an early start here for Frost of Sunshine. Getting off to a really good start here. First blood. Frosted Sunshine didn't even waste any time. Normally you'd expect that this Kamazots wouldn't really become a relative member or a relevant member until much later on in this match, but the solo kill already, just completely ignoring the wave, understanding that you're not going to take as much archer damage, has the Warrior's Blessing for that nice bit of sustain, and just not a whole lot that Ivan could have done there. Yeah, it looks like it might have been a little bit of trouble there for Ivan, too. We'll have a brief pause as Lyric going to pause the game. Soul's going to try and get everybody back into this, so a moment we'll make sure all the players are sorted out and they get right back into this, but it hasn't been unfortunate, but I mean, if you're on the side of Charizard, I mean, it's best of ones all the way through today. That's the way the format's going to be. The teams at the top of each group are the two teams that are going to be able to move through. So if you can get off to a good start, you take it. You, you take qualify it. in, yeah. It's, it's the beauty of competitive. It's, it's also a bit of the nature of competitive. Absolutely. It's just that aggressive kind of a take where if you can have it, you might as well grab it. And that's already scary. You were just talking about how this Kamazos could potentially be used to sort of dive the throw, to be the sort of hard to peel harasser that's on the back side of this and already off to a good start now. That's when Kamazots really feels strong, right? When he's able to get ahead early and experience more than anything and then start having big rotations. Yeah, at times it can sometimes feel a bit underwhelming for the Kamazot solo yes. players, but I think in this circumstance, if Frosted Sunshine is able to maintain the level of the pressure that he's already managed to establish in the solo lane that should transition pretty nicely over into the mid and late game right when the laning f phases are really starting to end speaking of which you already see jose lurking on this duo side seems to want to get a gank off pretty soon here onto wormy and raiden there's already some trouble that's coming out here for the artemis drops the slowdown off himself but has the sprint should be able to close the gap a little bit jose not gonna be able to find anything the stun comes through as well but not gonna be enough Bikwandu in a lot of trouble now. Going to be able to get that invade and punish off just in the nick of time. So Cookster going to have to walk away empty-handed there, but does still manage to pull the purification beats. Yeah, and this, this has become a problem over here in the solo lane now. That early DC looks like kind of affected Ivan's start to the game, but at this point, Frosted Sunshine has done absolutely everything he can with that early advantage. 
and rightfully so. I mean, there's a lot on the line for these teams to be able to, you know, reliably compete in that SCL week in and week out once they make it into that league format. So certainly no problem at all with Frost and Sunshine coming in and putting himself in the best spot he can for his team. At this rate, I'm really expecting Frost and Sunshine to start looking for some of those blue buff invades. You've yes. already got so much pressure over the Kakolin. You may as well take full advantage of things and, and continue to just further pressure out the jungle. Maybe that blue buff in Bay can bleed over into the Harpies and then eventually into the speed buff. Anything that can get Cookster going early on to the same extent as Frosted Sunshine going to put Charizard in a really nice spot here. That's what they're trying to get. Trying to get comfortable here is Wormy and, and Raiden continue to duke it out here in the dual lane. The sprint is going to be down from both of these supports, but the beads are still available for Lyric. Raiden, on the other hand, doesn't have beats. He has the Aegis early on trying to mute out the damage. That means the stuns, the roots, all that control is going to be getting essentially max value here from this Terra. Normally, I, I think a lot of Hunters struggle with fully committing towards the Aegis route as opposed to B. Speaking of which, Final Judgment not going to be used to confirm anything. In fact, Cookster is still going to jump in aggressively onto Jose after freely invading the red buff. Altazan is going to be here for the follow-up, though. Has the wall stun landing onto Cruz on the Poseidon, but not able to really have any follow-up for it, even with that lockdown. Ivan's done a good job trying to close this experience gap a little bit over there in the solo lane, but it's not going to be an easy task. Feels though Piquandu was expecting a little bit more follow-up there from Jose, but Jose only having been level four, didn't have that Mystic Rush to go charging in against right. Arya after the Final Judgment connected. That's exactly what it looked like there to me. It looked like, you know, a good setup, but if there was no follow-up, then fine. And that's basically what ends up happening there. Early on, like you said, Bikondu kind of let that final judgment fly and, and tried to put it towards Cook, I suppose, and just were, they really just weren't able to find much. I feel as though I would have preferred to see that to confirm the red buff. It, it might sure. look a little bit awkward expending your ultimate just to confirm your team's buff, but maintaining that timer is the most important part. That's why we see pro league players actually choosing to make those kind of committed decisions because while they can be a bit heavy-handed at times, it's certainly worthwhile to keep track. Not much danger here for Frost. It still has the ultimate available if he needs it, and he should be fine. So in the end, he doesn't even have to worry about that much of it. As we head back towards this middle lane where Cruz on this Poseidon, still waiting to try and find an impactful Kraken. They can lock down Bikondu or even get Jose going in too aggressive without that overhead kick available. He could be a target, but it's not easy for Poseidons to take down Robins. No, and it, it most likely won't be very easy in no. this game either. It, right now, Cruz does have the, the perks of the fact that Jose trailing just a little bit behind Cookster there, so hasn't been nearly as aggressive as what we've seen out of the Humbats, who's already invaded a couple of times inside of Souls' uh, jungle. But I, I want to keep an eye out for Ivan because this has been a pretty strong recovery, I feel like, from yes. the Kakolin. He really was irrelevant, or looking to be, but now he's managed to... He's still down about a level and a half or so, I'd say, but the buff invade is on. Char's on my backyard have already moved in to try and strip the red wall. Not going to land for the stun. Jose is about half health, but still moving forward aggressively. Got to be careful. No route there to contest, so the oracles are going to go the way of Charizard. But just look at this fluid movement from Charizard in my backyard. They go from the mid wave to the red buff to the oracles. All this farm. Now it's going to be the purification can be forced out one more time from Mikwando. Now coming in is Jose, but immediately right into the Cataclysm. That's going to set up Cruz to follow up with the with the Kraken. Finds a nice kill. Jose not going to end up falling, so he is going to be able to escape. But they do take down Altazar. Tidal Surge, just not going to be able to close the distance. Went right in between the center of Souls' mid and jungle. So, Jose and Biquandu will manage to survive there, but same cannot be said for the Terra. Just absolutely destroyed by the Kraken. Yeah, and that might have been a chance for Jose to come in and at least try and find Cookster, or at least bring him and put him in some danger. But because of the, the, the timing on the blink, which is just unfortunate, he comes in right as the Cataclysm comes out from Wormy. That really kind of shuts everything down. Cruz is right there to follow up with the Kraken. They at the very least take down Altazan. They can't quite get Jose, but they're very close. There's a nice Fear No Evil blink in, though. Or right. aggressive jump in, I should say, from Cookster. We've already seen plenty of uh, aggressive movements out of the Humbats, and... I think it's evident that he's not going to let up anytime soon. And you talked about it already, Taco, and I think you're kind of right to point out because these are teams that we don't really know yet, you know, still some, some relative unknowns, and, and we're starting to see their stories develop here. But the jungle mid synergy kind of seemed to be there, right? They very cleanly went for the red buff invade, came back towards the oracles. That gank attempt in mid lane was relatively clean as well, maybe a little bit that could have been cleaned up there, but 
it definitely seems like they're on the same page already. We may only be about seven and a half minutes in climbing into this match, Finch, but it, there's no reason to... Uh, or I, I think you're completely in the right with, with everything you just said here. I think that the mid-jungle has definitely already got some very clear synergy between the two. Monkey Toss not going to be able to catch up if Yukwandi doesn't have those purification Perfect. beads and the Cataclysm knockup. And then the Shockwave to follow up as well as their crew is going to try and track down Altazan. He is able to grab him on the back end. That's two quick kills for Charizard in my backyard now as Cookster and Wormy pair up perfectly. Then Cruz comes in on the back end to follow up. Not even sure that Wormy needed to use that Cataclysm, but goes for it anyway just to really make sure that the Thoth <laughs> cannot escape. They might have been able to confirm their red buff, but Souls at the cost of what? And just when we were talking about how the jungle mid and the uh, and support, those three really have been have been communicating well together, that trend continues as Charizard gets aggressive onto the red buff. And that's the part that it can it can be hard to gain over time. So it's good that they have that already. But just look at the confidence that Charizard in my backyard are already showing. I mean, AC Wormy challenging a Robin on the left mid harpies uh, clearly was a little bit unsuccessful with that one, but even Raydoon relatively quiet game from the Artemis. Suddenly we see him solo invading, trying to challenge Lyric on his own purple buff. Doesn't even allow the Hachiman to drop this. And, and Raiden, with a slight experience lead, also just goes to show that Charizard in my backyard are by no means scared of taking up a fight. They've shown it here. Nice shot comes out from Raiden on the Lyric. Always nice to get that first one to get you a little bit of extra love there as Lyric does finally tick over to level 9. But... Got to fall back a little bit of that clear advantage going to the Hachiman here. Boxing is not necessarily going to be in Raiden's favor. Despite the level lead, Lyric does have that red buff around him right now. That's and fair. the Hachiman auto attacks will end up being just a little bit stronger and a little bit more potent. So I respect that Raiden doesn't decide to overcommit with that one. But, and Raiden, recognizing that he might be in a little bit of trouble, does fall back. It's both the mid and the hunter, really, though, that have gone with these Aegis' Taku, and that's, I think, because they've kind of honed in that souls don't have a ton of control on this composition, right? It's mostly Altazan that they're worried about as the red buff invade comes out yet again. Oh, no. Speaking of which, Terra just going to get completely controlled and destroyed Lots inside ults. of the Kraken and Fear No Evil. That's three ults that they had to come in, though, to make that end up happening. Can Lyric and the rest of the squad get in in time to try and contest? It looks like no. Very clean disengage from Charizard. And they had to commit a lot because Cataclysm was a bit off the mark. But they grab the kill. They get the invade they're looking for, and they're out of it. It's just the way, though, that Charizard have continued to aggress and, and move throughout the map. They go from one point exactly to the next. They don't really waste any time in between. And it feels as though every single play out of Charizard in my backyard has yielded positive results. Meanwhile, Souls, they've been playing completely on the response of this game. I've been still in some trouble, but you're exactly right to say that Charizard has been playing very clean together. This might be real trouble for Ivan. The leap in's gonna do it. Frosted Sunshine brings him down. Still a little bit of shades of trouble from that early start for Ivan means that Frosted Sunshine can have a very comfortable landing face. Just look at this aggressive build though from Frosted Sunshine. Doesn't even go for the glass shield. Instead, straight into the voice shield. Has a meditation on Online, plus the health chalice, so you can imagine that Ivan probably gonna get dope there no matter what yeah. on the Kakolin for as strong of recovery as Ivan tried to make after that initial first blood death. It, it just seems as though Frosted Sunshine just has the edge after that. I like this though for Frosted Sunshine. As good as Glad Shield is right now, and it really is good as Raiden hold that thought, wants to take the boxing match. Beads are forced out from Lyric, a nice crit comes out, and that is going to force him to rethink his options. Rollout's coming in from Wormy as well. It could be a collapse, but Altazan is going to be here to try and create some space. Does land the roots. Wormy gets controlled. Cataclysm now onto the support, but Cruz and the rest of Charizard in my backyard are showing up. But Terra's only level 7. Fortunately enough, Cruz not going to have the mana to give chase, so Terra is going to actually manage to get away, but the same cannot be said for his Hachi man. The Hunter is still going to end up falling there for souls, and now Invade is on with Charizard in my backyard. And no beads for Lyric when he does come back up as the red buff Invade is on. Looks like they were not able to strip it away, but Kandu is going to be able to defend that one for himself. But Charizard in my backyard, the call seems clear that it's duo side pressure that they want. They've been stripping this red buff repeatedly and trying to force souls into bad fights. Jose just oh, does not stun. have a whole lot to work with. And Wormy could be in a lot of trouble. Your final judgment and Mystic Rush both going to be off the mark. And Wormy still most likely going to end up falling here. No, he's still just being bought barely enough time to stay alive. Now, this is the chance for the punish. They took him a long time to get that kill, but unfortunately, 
Cookster by himself was not able to come in and punish. The Earth and Fury, it looks like, had to come out in response, which they probably wouldn't have had to use if they could have gotten Wormy a little bit sooner, but very, very close. But Souls have got to start connecting on their abilities. You can't afford to miss both the Mystic Rush and the Final Judgment. You're already working with very limited crowd control here. So right. what little bit of damage that you can throw out after the fact has to connect. Gold Fury being contested. Kraken is used to confirm. CIMB will grab the Gold Fury. And we can do and Lyric have to kind of just watch that one go away. But it's a 5,500 gold lead. 7,500 experience, the experience deficit. A lot of it is over here in the solo lane, but look elsewhere. I mean, a two-level lead for Cookster over Jose, that's also going to be a problem for them, too, is Frost and Sunshine going to go for the dive. He barely even feels these tower shots. Well, he's going to start noticing them now since he doesn't have a whole lot of mana to work with. Would have ended up being another solo kill had he found the Vampiric Bats or the Screech, but since both of those failed to connect, Ivan will manage to back and... Realistically, Ivan probably should have ended up dying there for as up as he chose to play in the wave, despite how low he was. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be deterred by the fact that he's down a few le levels here. That definitely uh, speaks to the heart of a true solo laner, right? <laughs> that is always going to be willing to, to play up in your face, but got to be careful. Sunshine certainly can punish. Also kind of feels a little bit like frustration, if you ask me, Finch. Ivan hasn't had a, a single gank to his lane to try and alleviate some of this pressure. I think They've that kind of given up on it, Jose they? does feel as though it's a lost cause, and so he's trying to create uh, instances to help in elsewhere on the map. He's trying to control a little bit more of that mid-duo. Uh, aspect, but it, it's just not really coming into play here. It, it sort of isolate the that lead, right? If, if they don't if they don't fight around Frosted Sunshine, then his lead doesn't really matter yet, and maybe it's a chance for a more even four on four. The problem is they've kind of lost the four v four elsewhere on the map, right? In the in the mid lane with the with the jungle mid. Uh, pairing in particular has really been a problem for them. So yes, they've kind of left that alone, but they haven't won the matchup here either. And at some point, they're going to have to recognize that Frosted Sunshine yes. is <laughs> a rotate. very, <laughs> very active participant in, in some of these team fights because we haven't witnessed a single fight that Frosted Sunshine has full on participated in. Speaking of which, Cookster probably going to be dropping the Fear No Evil any second now. Sure enough, comes out all focused onto Jose. Overhead kicks and get him out of trouble. Cracking on Altazan yet again. Too much water to swim. He went to the deep end and now he's done. Raiden looking for Lyric on the right hand side. Can't find him, but still going in is Cookster. Overhand smash finds that kill. And he makes it out of the tower too. Now coming out in favor of Charizard in my backyard. Souls are reeling. A little bit overexcited there from Cookster. Uh, threw that monkey toss into the wall, so yeah. <laughs> didn't manage to connect it onto the purple buff, but it's no problem because his team has got his back. Wormy, I love this play from the Geb, absorbing as many shots as possible to keep these creeps alive for as long as possible, so that way the tower continues to take that extra damage from his hunter. And you can kind of push, that wave will keep pushing up to you. They gotta come deal with it. We talked a little bit though after that, you know, after that great play in Charizard over there in dual lane about how Frosted hasn't really rotated yet. And in all honesty, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious why. I mean, I, I would love to have a level 16 Kamazots in my fights. Of course, Charizard have been doing fine without him, so it's not a big deal, but you know, you bring some of that lead over to the rest of us. That was probably the, the key part of that statement though, Finch, is that the lead has already been established on both sides of the map. That's Every fair. single lane has won pretty heavily for Charizard in my backyard and, and Souls, the only thing that they can really be left to do is just try and recover what little bit of farm they have left on the map. They've already lost their T2 at around the 15 minute mark. That's a really early time to watch your T2 tower go down, especially when you have zero gold fury control. Yeah, and one easy way for Ivan to get back into this game is for Frosted Sunshine to make some rotations and them to not pay off as Bikwandu has to just stand there and take it from the crack, and the Aegis does eventually come out, but he's already taking the damage. Cookster is going to rotate in the back side. If he has the overhand smash, it could be enough, and brings him down. Bikwandu is going to have to go all the way back to base. And it's not over just yet. Jose taking huge chunks out of his health. Mystic Rush going to be able to avoid the Cataclysm stun, but they're not done with it just yet. Now it's Lyric, who's under fire, and both Jose and Lyric will manage to get away for the moment, but the same cannot be said for this T1 in mid. Right, they forced everyone back, so yes, maybe for the most part they all got away, but now there's some map pressure that's free up for Charizard to take. It's going to be the Tier 1 tower first. Looks like they are going to start coming over towards this Fire Giant pit. They've already grabbed Pyro, so they're looking for the big boy objective itself, or no, rather the gank attempt. Ivan hasn't had to worry about much gank attempts all game oh. long, but it's about to become a real problem. Overhand smash. 
Not gonna be able to find the last hit. Instead, it'll be Raiden with the auto attack from the Suppress the Insolent. Duo has lost, or pretty heavily, in, in Souls' side. And mid lane, same story. And now, the, the final killing blow, it seems, for Souls is, is that Charizard in my backyard, by taking away every single one of those T1 towers, it'll be that much harder for Souls to actually try and get a successful disengage away from this team. And they've already been struggling as is, just with surviving from a couple of the members charging them in the jungle. Now with the Gold Fury being aggressed on one more time by Charizard in my backyard, they took the first one, easily gonna take the second. No one's even mildly interested in, in contesting this. And Charizard have done a great job of of making sure they capitalize on this lead as Lyric is in a whole mess of trouble. The oh. Monolith blocks the horse. Lyric's still able to make it out of there, but not nearly as good of an escape as he would have liked. It looks like they will cleanly disengage, but it's just been that kind of game, hasn't it? Uh, Al gonna be able to redeem himself in his hunter's eyes. A bit unfortunate <laughs> that the Monolith would block the mounted archery. It's a rather fickle ability. It's very easy to get caught on, on the side of walls and the like because it can be really difficult to turn and that seemed to be the case there for Lyric, but it was a, it was a great stun follow-up out of the terror that ensures Lyric gets to see another day. Yeah, to be honest, it would be hard to do that on purpose, like that exact play if it was the other way around and the horse on the other side as the blink attempt comes out from Jose. I think recognizing that uh, trying to take down Cruz just is not going to work. He has the Kraken available, being patient with it for now. Just going to drop the Whirlpool and look for the retreat as he takes a good bit of poke. That was some nice poke damage over the wall there between the Hachiman and the Thoth, Bikwanu and Lyric, reminding Cruz that he's not free to do everything he wants just <laughs> yet. Mystic Rush on top of the Poseidon, that's going to force out the Aegis and the Geb Cataclysm, but Cruz is just falling so low. This is perfect. They forced him to use uh, the Kraken suboptimally onto the two tankier targets that this team has, but they're not able to capitalize any further on it. So yes, they get an ability and the Aegis forced out from Cruz defensively, but I don't know if they regroup and fight 5v5, if they even have a chance to capitalize. They still have Ikwandu's final judgment on the Thoth, plus Terra and Hachiman's abilities, or ultimates are about to come back up again. So they'll still have three to work with in the next team fight, should that happen. I think it's more important that Charizard in my backyard ended up losing two pretty impactful team fighting ultimates with that one. Now it's mostly just going to be relying on Cookster, I think, with the Fear No Evil. And if he's out... Of of time, like a slight bit of mistiming on that one. It'll be very difficult, I think, for Charizard in my backyard to fully execute on a kill. Dancing around the fire giant now is Jose and Rudd. Ward control and the vision going to go over to Charizard in my backyard as they move into the fire giant pit. They don't quite have everyone here for the defense. Lyric is elsewhere. Altazan is elsewhere. But everyone else is here to try and defend as the fire giant does get pulled. Raiden got started up. Wormy is going to be the one tanking. Ivan is nearby, but it doesn't look like from their positioning that Souls really want a hard contest. Kraken will mean that they don't have to contest because Charizard in my backyard is going to go ahead and secure that fire giant. First one of the game falling just shy of the 21 minute mark here. And with it, I can only imagine the amount of sieging that's about to take place. Souls already in the process of preparing for it. You've got Hachiman on the duo side trying to push as far as possible. Maybe looking to take away that team one before being forced to back to base. If Charizard in my backyard recognizes that this Hachi is staying a little bit too long in duo, they could possibly push for Phoenix here. They are going to start pushing forward and it looks like Lyric has been forced to back. Not going to go for the right Phoenix though now that they no longer see him in duo. They're going to come grab this tier two in mid as well and have all three Phoenixes opened up. They're going to let Frost it come in and be the first one to tank this up and it should fall relatively easily. But Taco, how is the defense here from Souls up against the siege from Charizard? Everything's pretty much lying on the back of Piquandu here. Uh, Thoth, by far, probably one of the best gods you can imagine for defending against the Phoenix sieges. But he's also usually not level 17 when That's he's <laughs> trying to do so. He's, I, I think that Piquandu has done a, a decent enough job at, at staying close in farm, uh, considering that Souls have lost literally everything on the map, including their own jungle. So uh, the fact that he's still 17 and uh, he really just needs to finish off this Obsidian Shard, that's going to help out greatly with trying to get a little bit better poke damage against these Geb Shields and the like. And I don't even think that Charizard in my backyard are a particularly tanky composition. I just think that they did a great job snowballing their lead and uh, making sure to suppress souls long enough that now they're in this position where they're completely deprived of the 
experience that they would need to appropriately fight back into this. And I, th I think you hit the nail on the head there, Taco. It's one thing to get that early lead, but they kind of snowballed it out of control, didn't they? they? They capitalized really well on it at every moment. They constantly were invading the red buff and forcing souls into bad fights in the jungles where they could land picks. Even without Frosted rotating over with his early lead, the 4v4 went their way, and Charizard sort of came by that one honestly, right? It wasn't so much off of, you know, repeatedly stealing the blue buff and putting down Ivan. They were fighting up against Souls 4v4 and just winning. You almost forget that the solo lane was ever even a thing because right. you see that initial first blood happen, and then it's just quiet for the rest. Speaking of quiet, it's time for the turn up now from Charizard in my backyard. Ivan just completely obliterated underneath the Phoenix from the Kraken Cataclysm, but the same can be said for Cruz's final judgment takes him off the map. That's one for one. I think Cruz might be a lot more valuable than Ivan at this point in the game. Lyric in some trouble, but now Cookster could be getting punished out. He's forced to use the A. Guess he's going to make it back to the Phoenix line, which has been dropped successfully. Cookster gets rooted, comes in for the dunk to Jose, but the Geb Shield just that much better. Mikandu doesn't have enough damage to burn through it, and Charizard are going to look for the disengage. Geb Shield straight into the Meditate means that this Humbats has zero chance of dying anytime soon. If Souls wanted to find that one, they'd have to step up a little bit further, and stepping any further into Charizard would have meant an almost definite death. Almost certainly would have thrown their lives away there as Charizard successfully grabbed that Phoenix on the left-hand side. It does end up costing them Cruz's life as uh, Bikwandu does a great job of kind of picking him out there with that final judgment and finding him, but in the end, I think Charizard is still okay with that train. I mean, they're up 15k gold, 13,000 experience. They got the Phoenix, and now they only have two more to break down before they can move into that Titan room. Uh, keep in mind also that Charizard were not only able to find picks and force relics there, but that came with pretty much two of their members not even really participating in sieging the Phoenix itself. It was all about Raidune focusing out that one and Wormy looking to peel for the Artemis if necessary. Frosted Sunshine also kind of just lurking around the corner there. But Cruz and Cookster both went really aggressive almost immediately at the start of that engagement. And I'm kind of surprised that Souls weren't able to find a little bit more from that. That just goes to show how much of a lead Charizard truly have over Souls. It's just too bad that they lost Ivan so early on. That was kind of the initial plan from Charizard, right, was to all in commit onto him. Because I think if you have your Kukulin, you can punish that Cookster dive a little bit better. But he was sort of the one that they picked out early, said, you're not going to be in this fight, and kind of opened the door a bit. Ivan was just melted, though. Yes. I don't even think that he looks like a any form of frontline right now when Charizard are able to just take him out so quickly. And part of it's just kind of attributed heavily to that build. Glad Shield into the Nemean, into the Runic, and, or the Relic, excuse me. And I, I just don't really see the merit here because for Ivan, it feels like he just went for the options that were cheap and yeah, available right then and there. He, he was that starved of, of gold that he just couldn't even uh, itemize. No, you're exactly right. This is sort of when you pay for that cost-effective build, right? That's because we were talking about how he was able to sort of regain or sort of catch back up to Frosted Sunshine early, and I think it's because he goes at these cost-effective items in the short term. But now that you're late and you're, you're behind in experience, which he is, and you have this sort of cheaper build, I mean, there's really not that much health in it. He can get burned relatively quickly, and Souls are already experiencing it when Charizard is all in committed with the Kraken. If Ivan's able to get that Pestilence finished off or a Bulwark, whatever it may be, then we might see some chances of survivability. Yes. But as it currently stands, I don't think that Ivan can afford to be the frontlining factor here for Souls. I think that, that has to come out of the Terra with the Earth and Fury proc popped around her. And to be fair to Ivan, he wasn't even really trying to frontline. They just kind of picked him on the last time, but they did a really good job making sure they were able to grab him on the backside with that crack and take him down early and the Phoenix Siege is on again. Ivan goes in, does get the two-man knockup, but he gets locked down and shredded by Raiden Cruz. Gets the last hit. Jose wants to dunk in as well, but it's too much damage. Overhand smash and one more auto is going to do it. Cookster finds that kill as well. Frosted Sunshine has to regroup. Meditation to top them all off. 793 crit. That was almost 792 damage, more than what was necessary <laughs> to find the kill. As Loro now going to meet the same fate as two other members from his team. Nearly a full on Dia's side. The Phoenix will end up falling here. Cookster still looking to finish off these last two, and I don't think he's going to find them. They managed to make it back into the fountain, and everyone else from Charizard in my backyard, they've got all their eyes onto that Titan. That's going to do it. Charizard in my backyard. Take this game over. Souls already 
give themselves a one set victory here as these are going to be best of ones trying to put themselves in the best possible poss position to qualify because again this is best of ones. Everyone's going to be playing each other at least once here in these group stages. And the top two are the ones that get to move on. Charizard already in a great spot. And congratulations to Charizard. It's the debut of the, the PlayStation members. And, and this right. has already been, I think, a really strong showing for Charizard in my backyard. That was very controlled, very disciplined as well from their players. So... Um, I'm really curious to see what more they have to bring for us. That's right, Taco. No one else gets to win the first PS4 game that we broadcasted, right? It's just Charizard. They they got that. That's theirs. That's theirs. No Forever. Can take it from them. Yeah. They had a great set, though. No, honestly, it was really clean. <laughs> I mean, yes, it was a bit, big, a bit of trouble in the solo lane, but again, I don't think that matters at the end of the day too much. I mean, obviously, it does impact the game, but the way that it played out, it didn't end up mattering as much. I feel like Charizard did a great job really coming out on top. The main thing for me is that I, I think Charizard in my backyard just seemed like the more experienced team overall. They did, yeah. it, it seemed as though their members kind of had a, a very firm understanding of what their role was throughout the entirety of that match in comparison to Souls. They all looked a little bit frazzled, a little bit lost once they fell behind, didn't really seem to know what the necessary steps were to take for recovery. And in the end, well, that's why we see such a commanding, dominant victory from Charizard in my backyard. Yeah, they really do end up coming out looking strong. But again, we're going to...